Hello everyone, welcome back to On The Fly. Today we're going to be taking a look at day three of the Women's World Championship happening in Utica, USA. So with that being said, we'll hop around into it today with the scores from today's game, starting off with an 8-1 to victory for Sweden over China. Now this game was pretty much exactly as you see it. 8-1 to victory, it was a blowout. Sweden dominated play the entire game. China was just trying to hold on. And even they got to a point where they were do, using the old strategy of, you know, throw someone up at the opposing blue line, see if you can get the, get the puck to them. They ended up scoring a goal off it. And then, of course, Sweden caught on and just threw a defenseman back there. And then it was four on four, and Sweden put in a lot of goals after that. So it didn't quite work the way that they wanted to, but it was definitely an interesting strategy. And it kind of shows, you know, that China's going to be creative at this tournament. They, can, they understand that they're not necessarily the most skilled team. But where they can compete is, you know, they're going to have fun with it. They're not going to, you know, challenge teams mano a mano, but they're going to try and tactically beat them. And I really like that today. You saw a bunch of different tactics that they were using, which is kind of cool. You know, they started with the trap style, didn't really work for them. They tried the, you know, the one woman high strategy didn't quite work for them not either. So they basically used a bunch of different little tactics that they used today. So definitely watch that moving forward to see what they try and stick with. I don't think they'll go back to that one woman high idea but at the same time you never know it's one of those strategies that you know it works sometimes other times it doesn't you just sort of have to be on the right day at the right time and today china did score a goal off it so we'll see if they bring that back at all and then eight to one victory pretty much a blow not too much to talk about here then we have Canada and Switzerland. In this game, I had predicted to be a blowout. You can see the score here, 3 to nothing. Not that big of a blowout. Canada looked decent, I'd say. They didn't look, you know, what to what Canada should be. But at the same time, they, they played a decent game today. Swiss played pretty good, too, for the most part. Andre uh, Brandley stood on her head yet again and saved, I believe it was 42 shots. And really just sort of stole the show yet again. Remember her from the previous game, stopping nearly 50 shots. It's just, unfortunately for the Swiss, they had a tough matchup having to play Canada and the U.S. back-to-back. But, you know, the there's one thing that they can cling to with hope, and that's in their goaltending. They've looked decent. Other than that, you know, they get their chances, and unfortunately, they just couldn't really capitalize on it. Uh, but at the end of the day, that's your final score on the Canada-Swiss game. 3 to nothing Canada, and we'll see if Canada can keep that moving forward. A little bit more tougher of a schedule moving forward here, but nonetheless, we'll see how that goes. And now let's talk about the sort of the game of the day, what I had predicted to be the game of the day between the U.S. and the Czechs. Now, this was a 6 nothing victory for the U.S., and I mean... 6 nothing isn't really how I'd describe this game. You know, it started off early. The Czechs had, I believe it was five power plays that they didn't capitalize on and didn't really ever get the zone for. It was just one of those sort of quote-unquote abysmal sort of power plays. And it was really disappointing to see, especially, you know, you're coming in as the underdog and, and you're really looking good outside of just the fact that you know, you just can't capitalize on your power play. You can't get the zone. You can't score. You can't even get the puck, whether you're not just skating into someone. It was just a disappointing outcome for the Czechs on their power play. And that basically extended throughout the rest of their game. But yet they held it to basically one nothing. Then there was about two minutes or three minutes left in that second period where the U.S. put in two quick goals. And then from there on out, it was just downhill because the Czechs had to try and basically move around their tactics, had to move outside of what they were supposed to do with their trap you know they had to start trying to take chances and whenever you take chances you're going to get scored on so at the end of the day this game was a final of six nothing but the checks did look pretty good outside they just couldn't capitalize on their chances they had i can't even count how many breakaways odd, odd woman rushes it's just they could not find the back of the net the u.s found the back of the net which is just sort of the unfortunate part here and you know the u.s wins six nothing Take now, take a look at the news from today. So China's back down to earth. Remember, they beat Japan uh, it was yesterday, uh, and now they're back down to earth. They got kicked out, kicked by Sweden. Unfortunately for them, that's how I expect this tournament to move forward for them. As for Sweden, they've looked really good the last couple games. I would not be surprised to see them be real contenders, especially when you think about it. Right, they're going to have that sixth spot right now. That third, uh, that that sorry, that top spot in Group B, that sixth spot overall. But the top team in Group B will play the third team in Group A. That's looking like it might be any mix of the Czechs, the Finns, or the Swiss. And I'm really curious to see who that team is because I mean the way Sweden's been playing lately. 
they're going to have a problem, I think, in Group A. Just, you know, if it's uh, the Czechs, you know, they have their games. They don't, and they, they play some bad games too. The Finns are the same way. The Swiss, I mean, the Swiss are just sort of there still. The Swedes might have a shot here to make it to the semis this year, get promoted back up into the Group A. We will see what goes on there. Of course, plenty of action still to go. Moving on here, the Brandley Show. Once again, Andrea Brandley absolutely electric the last couple games for her you know the u.s and canada was somewhere around 90 saves just one of those things you know you throw them out there and and you found your goalie for the rest of the tournament so hats off to her for her performance a lot the last two games against canada and the u.s as well canada three points is three points i mean if you're going to take it that way you know, it wasn't their best performance, but at the same time, a win's a win, and you, you'll take it any way you can. For the Czechs, power play woes, just unfortunately couldn't quite figure it out in terms of, you know, their power play. There's, they also had the five minute at the end. It looked a lot better, I will say. It got progressively better through the game when they finally were able to get their zone time. It's just they never got the zone, and from there, just sort of went downhill. The, the, the U.S. ended up pinning them in their own end for most of it. So really just a disappointing power play led the rest of the game, sort of going downhill for them. And lastly, with the U.S., there's some decent news here. So Savannah Harmon went down with about five minutes left in the second. We did not see her return. Uh, I sent a tweet out to the people that were reporting on the game. Didn't hear back. But at the same time, it's one of those things where that'd be a big loss for the U.S. on the back end, as well as Caroline Harvey also got hurt towards the end of the game, blocking a shot, got the puck off the wrist. So that's another injury on the back end. Remember, the U.S., we talked about in the preview, you know, they had not enough defensemen really, you know, they took... They had 15 and 7, I believe, was the number for 22 when they first announced the roster. When they finally selected their team, they only took six defensemen, which means when we look at it, if they're down two defensemen with Harvey and Harmon, leaves them in a tough spot. And we'll see what ends up going on there. They'll probably have to make a couple roster moves, but we'll see there. As well as Sims, uh, Kirsten Sims. Also had a hip from behind penalty, likely will lead to a suspension. Nothing's been official yet, but I will. that's another sort of new snippet to be taking a look for over the next couple of days to see if she gets suspended for that. But now we'll move along here to the standings. So in Group A, we have the U.S. and Canada both in first place with two regulation wins each, six points. Czechs are in third place right now. Remember, they'll play the top of Group B there with three points, as well as Switzerland and Finland both have zero points. So they come in fourth and fifth in Group A. In Group B, remember the top six is what we're looking for. The top team will likely make the Olympics. That's what we're looking for the top six for. Sweden, six points. Germany, with three points. China with, with two points. Japan with one point. And lastly, Denmark in with two regulation losses, zero points. But remember, the bottom two teams get uh, relegated regardless. No game to be played. So big... Big things to play for here. And moving along here to the schedule for tomorrow. Only two games on tap, but they're going to be, I think they'll be pretty good games. Time, of course, will tell. But we have Germany and Japan coming up at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Now, this is a game I would highly recommend you watch. It's one of those games where it'll likely depend, sort of decide who's that team that's going to get relegated. Now, I know I keep saying this, but it's true. The Germany-Japan were likely the team that at least I would have thought would be fourth and fifth. You know, China's in there too, and, and any of those teams, when they're playing, it's going to be an electric game because they're playing for their tournament lives. So definitely stay, uh, tune in for that one, as well as Finland and the U.S. at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. This one, I, I, I find it hard to believe the, uh, that Finland is going to be able to hold on, but at the same time, you really never know, right? They, they played a good game against Canada the other day. We'll see whether or not they're going to be able to hold the U.S. down. It's just a matter of if they can capitalize. You know, the U.S. made a lot of mistakes today. They look good, but they made a lot of mistakes today. So Finland is a team that also plays that trap style. They're going to try and capitalize on the U.S. mistakes. So I, I think when we look at that, you know, if, if we look at it, lots of mistakes, scores off mistakes. In theory, that would work. I just don't know if Finland's going to be able to do that. So definitely stay tuned for that one. Game of the day is the 3 p.m. game. But also, if you haven't already, be sure to follow us on Twitter at OnTheFly1515 because what we're going to be doing after each game is we're going to be throwing out some comment and we're going to ask anybody that has any questions or wants to comment on the games to be appear in these videos. So be sure to follow us. Link can be found in the description below. Unfortunately, no comments today. But with that being said, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. If you'd like to drop a like, if you realize you're subscribing, tell all your friends and comment down below your thoughts on day three of the Women's World Championship. Until next time, see you.